Hey everyone, it's Farrick, and welcome to my intermediate pet copying guide. This guide is intended for those of you that already have pets that improve your gameplay experience, and you already have some experience with pet hatching and leveling. For those of you that have not delved in much pet hatching or do not currently have a usable pet, I will also be releasing a beginner pet guide sometime in the future. This video assumes you have also watched my last video titled, How Pets Work in 2020, as I will be referring to a lot of the information in it to keep this video more concise and to the point. These videos take a lot of time and effort to make, so if you do enjoy it, please be sure to click the subscribe button and thumbs up button. Let's get started. Now when I say pet copying, I'm referring to getting a pet with the exact same manifested talents as another pet. The method I have come up with involves three steps, the first of which will only need to be followed for the first pet you make per account. Step one is creating a starter pet, step two is transferring the talent pool, and step three is leveling the pet. Step 1. Creating a Starter Pet A starter pet is a pet that you will always use for every single copied pet from now on. This is a pet that has max stats with a talent pool that is not sticky at all. This blood bat that I have is a perfect example, as it has all stats maxed out and the talent pool contains only common and uncommon talents. To get a pet like this, you will first need to buy a Generation 1 blood bat. This pet has a very similar non-sticky talent pool but does not have the stats to start using immediately as your starter pet. You will then need to train this blood bat to adult, and then hatch with a starter pet like mine. I have multiple of these blood bat pets in the kiosk for you to hatch, and I will be re-adding them so that they are always available to hatch. The goal of these hatches is to not worry about the talents, but to make sure that the stats are maxed out. As a reminder, the max stats are 255 strength, 250 intellect, 260 agility, 260 will, and 250 power. It will take you multiple hatches to get to this point, but remember that you will only have to train the pet to adult, and you only have to worry about the stats, and once you make this starter pet, you will not need to make another one again on that account, provided you don't accidentally trash this pet. Once your blood bat has these stats, you are ready to move on to step two. Step two, finding your pet and transferring talents. If you are already familiar with the different pet types, you should know what five talents you want on your pet. After you figure out which 5 talents you want to copy, try searching the kiosk for that pet. Kingsaw removed the ability to completely search for all 5 talents on a pet at a time, and it's now just limited to just 2, but you can still get around this by searching for the right talents. You will need to search for the 2 most unique talents because that will narrow down your search to a very small number of pets. Later on in this guide, I will be showing you all 3 steps in action, but once you have found your pet in the kiosk, you will just want to hatch with it. After you have done that, train that pet to adult, and hatch the new adult with the exact same pet in the kiosk. You will want to hatch with the same pet in the kiosk to transfer the talents as quickly as possible. After three hatches, compare the talent pool of your pet with the talent pool of the pet in the kiosk. Keep repeating this process until you have finally have a pet with the same talent pool of the one in the kiosk. Once you are done with this, you are ready to move on to step three. Step 3. Leveling the pet. This is the final step. The way pets will be leveled is through always having two base pets. A base pet is a pet that is not mega, and the only manifested talents are ones that you want on the final pet. At the end of step 2, you are able to get a pet that has the exact same talent pool as the pet in the kiosk. You will want to train this pet to adult. If this pet does not fail at adult, this will be the first of two adult bases. You will then hatch hopefully just one more time with the same kiosk pet and train that to adult. If that pet also doesn't fail, you now have your two adult bases and will not have to hatch with the kiosk pet again. If any of the pets fail, immediately trash the failed pet and do not hatch it. Once you have two adult bases, you hatch them together and train the new pet to ancient. If it fails at ancient or at any point before it, immediately trash that pet. Once you get a successful ancient base pet, that becomes one of your two bases. You can now safely train one of your adult bases to ancient. If it succeeds, then you have two safe ancient bases and you can train the other adult to epic. If it fails, then you trash the fail and hatch the ancient base with the adult base and train that pet to ancient. At this point, you can probably see how this method works. You'll be leveling your pet through having multiple bases and slowly bringing up your pet to mega through this method. If the adult base fails by epic, then you trash it and hatch the two ancient bases. If it succeeds, 
then that becomes your epic base. And you can now train one of your ancient bases to epic, and you determine whether or not to move on based on the same factors as the previous pet levels. Once you have two epic bases, you can just rehatch those two pets over and over again until the newly hatched egg succeeds at Mega. Now this method may seem very expensive, but I can guarantee you it is the safest method of doing so. Any other method relies on far too much luck and can end up costing you more gold in the long run, and in some cases, even becoming impossible to complete. Keep in mind that once you reach step 3 and have two adult bases, it may only take you one more hatch before your pet can succeed outright, as demonstrated by the following animation. In it, we can see that the two adult bases are hatched together, and the baby is trained to Ancient. We now train one of the two adults to Ancient, and it also succeeds, which allows us to safely train the third adult to Epic. It also succeeds, and we can now train one of the Ancients to Epic. Since we now have two Epic bases, we can train the Ancient straight up to Mega, and it could succeed right there. As you can see, in this scenario, it only took one hatch beyond the initial hatches to transfer the talents. While this situation certainly won't happen every time, it is not that uncommon for it to happen. This scenario, combined with the fact that we are only hatching non-fail pets, is why this method has worked so consistently for me, and why I was able to copy all these great pets without too much effort. This method does require a lot of snacks, but if you watched my first three videos, they describe an easy way to get a hold of a lot of couch potatoes, and in turn, mega snacks. And remember, you do not have to feed your pet mega snacks unless you are on some of the stages where it requires a lot more energy per snack. Alright, so if none of that made any sense to you, then fear not, I will be showing you all three steps in order. Let's get started. So step one is going to be creating the starter pet. So I'm just going to go over here, and the first pet you're going to want to use when you make your starter pet is Generation 1 Blood Bat. Click this, buy it. You can name it whatever. I'm honestly just going to name it. It doesn't matter because I'm not going to actually keep a name for the pet until I actually have my starter pet complete. So then what you're going to want to do is train this pet to adult. Alright, so I've just trained this pet to adult. I'm just going to bring it over to the kiosk. And you're going to want to click on Browse Pets, Myth Pets, Blood Bat. And then you just want to go left. And I would recommend hatching with the ones that have the four uncommons and the five commons than the one uncommon because those are directly they have the same exact talents as this generation one blood bat and that ensures that you're going to have not only a non-sticky talent pool but also have a talent pool that doesn't manifest any of these talents easily and that's what's going to make it very easy for you to copy a pet so i'm just going to hatch it only cost 7500 gold i'm actually going to hatch the egg out right now because i want to see if any of the talents the stats transferred over Okay, so we actually got the strength and the power already to get to max. Um, so when you're doing this, the stats will either go... It will go to either the first parent, the second parent, or it will go in between those two. So strength went to the one in the kiosk. Uh, power went to um, the one in the kiosk as well. These two remain the same, but intellect went halfway in between. So yeah, now I'm going to train this pet to adult, wait for my hatching timer to reset, and do another hatch. Alright, so this blood bat is adult now. This is the original one. I named it Abby, and I named the second one to Bo. So now I'm going to take Bo and hatch it again with one of those kiosk pets. And then I can just hatch them together. Let's check it out. Oh, wow. Look at that, dude. This is... Oh, wow. This, this was the pet we had before. This is the pet we have now. Both the agility and the will went straight to max. The power was already maxed from the first hatch and the strength as well. Now literally all we need is intellect. And honestly, if this happens to you and in two hatches you get these four stats maxed out, most people go for like damage and resist pets or may cast pets. So for those pets, like you don't need intellect at all. But obviously for the purposes of this guide, I'm still gonna try to get that intellect maxed out as well. At this point, it's literally just the RNG so yeah, I'll be right back as soon as my hatching timer is reset. All right, so here I am with that same pet. I trained it to adult. This is the pet with the four maxed out stats. I just need intellect to be maxed out now. And hopefully it gets done in this hatch right here. So again, gonna hatch with that same maxed at kiosk pet. And let's see what the stats are. All right, there we go. We got the intellect on this pet maxed out. So just like that, with three hatches, I was able to max out the stats and create a starter pet. 
be very careful to not trash this one because you want to keep this pet forever. This will always be your starter pet from now on. All right, so let's move on to step two. All right, so we are now on step two. And just a reminder, this is Abby. This is the blood bat we made from step one. It has max stats, but it has the default generation one blood bats talents. These will be easy to replace. So whatever pet we decide to copy, the talents will transfer much more easily from that pet because of this. So the pet that I want to make is going to be a double pierce, triple damage death pet. All right, it's gonna search for one that I feel is good. This pet looks pretty good. Yeah, it has max stats and it's a gulcher, so it only costs 45,000 gold for me to hatch with it right now. That's really good. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with this one. So let's hatch. All right, you typically won't get all the towns copied until at least three hatches have been complete. So I recommend doing three hatches and then checking to see if the towns have transferred over. And it usually won't take just three hatches. It'll take more than three, but Three is where I like to just see how much progress has been made. All right, so I'm back and I've trained this pet to adult. And in case you're wondering, I got Wise and Death Giver. But of course, right now we're not worrying about what talents it gets because we're still worried on transferring the talent pool. So I'm gonna do another hatch here. All right, so it looks like we did get at least one new talent. So let me just... All right, I trained this pet to adult. I got Death Dealer and Wise. So I'm going to do the third hatch on this pet. Let's see what it gets. Let's see what it got. Looks like we have all the talents except for just one more. One of these two common talents is not in the pool of that pet. So hopefully with one more hatch, we can get rid of it. Let's see, can it happen in one hatch? Okay, actually, what ended up happening was... Uh, this rare talent, instead of replacing the common talent, replace the other rare talent. So I'm still going to train this pet to adult and do a hatch again. Most likely with the next hatch, that talent will be out and we will be ready to move on to step three. All right, I've trained that pet to adult. We got death dealer and armor piercer. Here's the pet in the kiosk. I just need this rare talent to replace this common talent and I'm ready to move on to step three. Let's hatch. And there we go. At this point, every single talent in order is the exact same as the talent pool of the pet in the kiosk. The derby talents could be different. We don't have to worry about those because that doesn't affect anything that has to do with this talent pool right here. The way the talents are manifested in this pool right here has to do with the pool on this half. So all I have to do now is train this to adult and then hatch one more time with the kiosk pet and then I need to get two adult bases. All right, the pet unfortunately failed with spell proof, but we're still not gonna trash this pet just because uh, it does have the exact talent pool that we want. So right now I just have to do keep on doing hatches until I end up getting two adult bases. All right, welcome to step three, where we're going to finally finish the pet. Now, we have this pet that has the same talent pool as the pet in the kiosk, and we need two adult bases. So here's the kiosk pet, and as you can see, every talent in this main talent pool lines up perfectly with every talent of the pet in the kiosk. Now, of course, some of the pet derby talents will be different, but that doesn't matter because we're only focusing on these main talents for now. So what I'm going to do is hatch. And then once that pet is done hatching, I'm going to train it to adult. This is an officially an adult base now because it has two talents that we do want and it's adult. So now what I'm going to do is hatch this with the kiosk pet again. And if that pet also succeeds at adult, then I never have to hatch with the kiosk again. All right, so this pet has just leveled up to adult and spoiler alert, it did succeed. These are now our adult bases and we never have to hatch with the kiosk ever again. So I'll see you as soon as I have a timer ready to hatch these two. All right, it is hatch time for these two adult bases right here. So step into the single sigil, only 3,750. <laughs> 
this shows you why you need to be able to do this method because this method makes sure that you focus a lot of your hatches on these self hatches which are extremely cheap and also the hatch timer is now only 30 minutes as opposed to the six hour one that kept happening so now what i'm going to do is train this pet to ancient all right so this right here is technically a fail we're gonna have to rehatch these two pets together all right this is gonna be take two of me self-hatching these two adult bases to try to get an ancient base and it failed with spell proof at adult oh my goodness are you kidding me dude okay cool just gonna get sprightly all right moment of truth can we just succeed one ancient pet there we go all right so this pet right here will become our ancient base so now i can take any one of these two adult pets oops did not mean to oh there we go we got armor piercer on it i want to make sure that like the time that i spawn spend on it is actually worth it oh wow look at that death dealer quicker i can lv this one oh wow okay so that's an epic base right there that has four out of the five talents that i want so see this is what i mean the reason this method works so well is because you see those two adult bases that i had earlier and you think i'm so far away and i'm also getting all these fails it seems like it's never going to happen but you stick with it and literally four hatches later i haven't had to do a single hatch after that fourth or fifth hatch or whatever and i already have two ancient bases and one epic base this actually allows me to train one of these ancient pets to epic now oh. death giver okay wow look at that i have two epic bases now i can literally just train this pet to mega now I want to see what it gets if it fails right away. Okay, so this this one, I think this is, this Nala pet right here is the one that was the fail. Okay, I'm actually running low on gold. Oh, that's right. So, yeah, so now that I have two epic pets, it's actually going to cost me a lot more. What? Are you serious, dude? I don't know, this pet is just unlucky. I've literally gotten all of these talents to manifest but yeah anyways i'm gonna do some gold farming and once i'm done with that i'm gonna return to the video and hopefully make it the pet so yeah all right i do apologize i did not get it on camera but i did end up getting the mega pet now it did not end up getting death giver which was the last talent it needed it got death boon but that's perfectly fine for me because i was gonna socket death boon anyways so um, it ended up working out because I can just craft a death giver jewel very easily and socket that instead and it'll be the exact same kind of pet Yeah, for your pets just follow the same process and it should end up the same for you It costs more snack, but it makes it a lot easier to track your progress with everything All right, so anyways, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful Please be sure to subscribe to the channel to be notified of when I make future tutorials and please share this video to any of your friends that are having trouble creating pets because i believe this method after applying it yourself it's very easy to do over and over again and it will help you track the progress that you're making when creating your pet anyways i'll see you guys next time